So, change of plans. We aren't doing Interstate 64. Per a fan request, we'll be doing Interstate 80 this episode. We'll do 64 next time. So let's pretend this is a good transition and get started. Interstate 80, usually abbreviated to I-80 or even 80, is an east-to-west cross-country interstate that runs 2,900 miles from San Francisco, California to Teaneck, New Jersey. The interstate came to be in 1956 and work continued until its completion in 1986. The route runs through the states of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, Nebraska, Wyoming, Utah, Nevada, and California. I-80 starts, or ends depending on your direction, in San Francisco at an exit with U.S. Route 101. It then immediately crosses the San Francisco Bay into Oakland, where it junctions two of its own spur routes, 580 and I-880. It then moves northwest through several suburbs and smaller routes, eventually junctioning Interstate 780 and I-680. From there it leaves the San Francisco area, exiting with Interstate 505 shortly after. 80 bypasses the Sacramento metro area, instead following a route around the city where it junctions Interstate 5 north of Sacramento. From there it continues northwest through some of Sacramento's suburbs until entering a more mountainous and forested part of California. I-80 continues to several smaller towns in eastern California before exiting the state into Nevada. I-80 turns due north toward Verde. Immediately after entering Verde, though, 80 turns east and enters the Reno area. I-80 junctions Nevada Route and Beltway 659. From there, 80 continues into downtown Reno, exiting with I-580, a spur for Carson City, before junctioning Route 659 again in West Reno. I-80 continues northwest towards Fernley, where it exits with Alt Route 95 and Alt Route 50. 80 continues through smaller Nevada cities such as Lovelock, Imlay, and Mill City. 80 enters the town of Winnemucca. From here, 80 turns southwest for about 40 miles before entering the town of Battle Mountain. I-80 continues to curve and weave its way through central Nevada, entering and exiting the towns of Carlin, Elko, and Wells. I-80 then has an exit in the non-existent town of Oasis before having its last exit in West Windover. It then exits the state of Nevada into the state of Utah immediately with an exit for Windover. Interstate 80 continues due east for about 44 miles before turning northwest and then southwest. It curves its way around Great Salt Lake before entering Salt Lake City. In downtown Salt Lake City, 80 has an exit with an I-15 spur route, Interstate 215. It then begins a north-south concurrency for Interstate 15 for about 3 miles before exiting due east towards Summit Park. After going through Summit Park and Silver Summit, 80 curves north towards I-84 before going northwest towards Wyoming. I-80 has two more exits before entering the state of Wyoming. Shortly after entering the Equality State, 80 meets State Route 89 in Evanston. 80 remains mostly straightforward throughout West and Central Wyoming, going through the major cities of Green River, Rock Springs, Rollins, and Laramie, all of which maintain a population of 35,000, by the way. I-80 meets Interstate 25 in the city of Cheyenne, Wyoming. It also has a non-interstate standard spur route. You'll see this a lot. 80 struggles to make good spur routes. From here, I-80 continues due east until exiting Wyoming and the western United States. Welcome to the Midwest, where we make corn. Interstate 80 has officially entered the Midwestern state of Nebraska, and will continue east for a little while before entering the town of Sydney. This is a segment of 80 that is never any more than 15 miles north of the Colorado border at any time. I-80 then junctions with Interstate 76. The odd thing about this junction is that there is no nearby town, it just kinda happens in the middle of nowhere. At this point, I-80 is concurrent with the South Platte River through the towns of Algala, Paxton, and Sutherland. In the rather large town, at least rather large for central Nebraska anyway, of North Platte, I-80 officially stops paralleling the South Platte River, only for it to follow the regular Platte River. I-80 follows the Platte River to the towns of Gothenburg, Kozad, Lexington, and Kearney. Near the town of Grand Island, I-80 stops following the Platte River and just moves due east toward Omaha. On its way to Omaha, I-80 nearly misses the town of York. It also misses the lovely named town of Beaver Crossing. We're almost to Omaha, but I can ignore the elephant in the room no longer. The city of Pleasant Dale. But more importantly, 80 goes to the city of Lincoln, Nebraska. In Lincoln, I-80 has one spur, I-180, which is arguably the only good Interstate 180 out of all of them. Outside of Lincoln, 80 curves northwest where it meets our old friend the Platte River before entering Omaha. Interstate 680, a spur of 80, goes around and outside Omaha. However, 80 itself just goes straight through the town, crossing the Missouri River into Council Bluffs, Iowa. In Council Bluffs, 80 maintains a nearly 3 mile concurrency with Interstate 29. Exiting Council Bluffs, I-80 curves northwest where it junctions I-880 and turns due east. 80 exits with US-59 in Avoca, Iowa, and then exits with US Route 71 and starts a concurrency with US-6 outside of Atlantic. In the suburb of DeSoto, I-80 exits with US-169 before entering West Des Moines. In 
West Des Moines, I-80 has an interchange with I-35 and I-235. I-80 turns north and then east and starts its 15-mile long concurrency with I-35 around the northern parts of Des Moines. Leaving Des Moines, I-80 loses its concurrency with US-6 in Newton, and then continues east towards Grinnell. 80 moves due east towards Iowa City, where it spurs with I-380, an interstate that moves north towards Cedar Rapids and ends in Waterloo. Outside of the Quad Cities area, I-280 begins its existence, serving as a useful bypass for non-local drivers. Shortly afterward, 80 exits with the Avenue of the Saints, a route that takes uh, St. Louis to St. Paul, also known as U.S. Route 61. After that, 80 exits with Interstate 74 and then curves around the north sides of the Quad Cities before turning south and crossing the Mississippi River into the state of Illinois. After crossing into Illinois, I-80 then has an exit with I-88 before crossing the Rock River, exiting again with Interstate 74 and then turning due east towards Chicago. In northwestern Illinois, 80 goes to the towns of Geneseo, Atkinson, Anawan, and Langley before junctioning U.S. Route 34 and Illinois State Route 26 in Princeton. Outside of Princeton, Interstate 80 then conjures up its third I-180, this time dubbed the useless highway that goes literally nowhere. In Illinois I-180 spurs south into Hennepin. There's a lot of history behind this route, but I'm not going to delve into it. I-80 then junctions Illinois Route 251 and 351 in LaSalle, Peru before exiting with Interstate 39, which can either take you to Rockford or Bloomington. At this point, Interstate 80 parallels U.S. Route 6 and the Illinois River, where all three junction Illinois Route 71. By this point, we've started hitting the outer Chicago suburbs. Interstate 80 goes through about mm, 15 Chicago suburbs, give or take. I'm not going to name them all here. However, 80 meets I-55 in Shanahan, 355 in New Lenox, Interstate 57 in Country Club Hills, and begins a concurrency with I-294 in Hazelcrest. 80 continues its concurrency up until it meets I-94 in Thornton. At this point, 80 begins a concurrency with 94, and the two continue into Munster, Indiana. Welcome to Indiana, prepare to be told. I-80 and I-294 meet both I-65 and I-90 in Lake Station. At this point, the two longest interstates, I-80 and I-90, and the United States have begun a concurrency. Everyone take cover, this is gonna be big. The two meet US Route 35 in Laporte and US 31 in South Bend, Notre Dame. The pair has a couple of exits in Elkhart and Bristol, before getting dangerously close to the Michigan border. They then proceed to have an abomination of an interchange with Interstate 69 before entering Ohio and exiting the Midwest of the United States. Welcome to Ohio! Welcome to Pennsylvania! In all seriousness, the Ohio Turnpike is one of the biggest vessels in northern Ohio and there's no way I couldn't talk about it. The 80-90 duo becomes the Ohio Turnpike, which is consistent across pretty much the entire state. The Turnpike has an exit with US-127, just north of West Unity, and then proceeds to a cold exit in Delta and Swanson before entering the outskirts of Toledo. In the Toledo area, the Ohio Turnpike has exits with I-475, US-20, I-75, and I-280. Continuing east, the Turnpike has an exit with US-6 outside of Fremont. It then has a cold exit with Ohio State Route 4 down the road. North of Norwalk, US-250 says hello, and then State Route 61 almost does the same. Welcome to Amherst. Interstate 90 has officially left the turnpike, and 80 is alone again naturally. Shortly afterward, I-480 spurs off into downtown Cleveland from North Ridgeville. After this, 80 has an exit with Interstate 71. A few miles after the I-71 exit, 80 meets up with Interstate 77. It then has an exit with State Route 8, which works as an access route to Interstate 271. Finally, 80 meets 480 again on the western side of Cleveland. I-80 has a few more exits before curving southeast and swapping roads with Interstate 76, and no, it's not the same 76 from Nebraska. Having officially exited the Ohio Turnpike, 80 kisses Tolls goodbye and crosses the Meander Creek Reservoir. It then has an exit with Ohio Route 46 and Mineral Ridge before swapping roads with I-680. Interstate 80 then has exits with Ohio Route 7, 11, and 711. It then immediately enters Pennsylvania and the town of Wheatland. Afterward, 80 has an exit with Spur Route Interstate 376 in West Middlesex. By this point, 80 has started to enter the Appalachian Mountains area. Between Mercer and Grove City, 80 has an interchange with Interstate 79. It then works its way across eastern Pennsylvania, exiting in the cities of Barkingville, Clintonville, Emlinton, Corsica, and Brookville. 80 then has an exit with US 219 in Du Bois. Working its way deeper into the Appalachians, 80 has exits with smaller towns such as Clintonville, Kylertown, Snowshoe, and Millsburg. Outside of Zion, 80 serves as the northern terminus for Interstate 99 before turning northeast for Mackeyville, where it has an exit with US 220 and State Route 64. After Mackeyville, 80 passes through the towns of Loganton, Old Furnace, and New Columbia. Outside of New Columbia, 80 exits with US 15, crosses the West Branch Susquehanna River, and then spurs it with its fourth and final Interstate 180. 80 then has exits in Mousedale, Buckhorn, Light Street, and Lime Ridge, where it crosses the Susquehanna River. I apologize, I guarantee you I am somehow butchering that name. 
Shortly thereafter, 80 has a cloverleaf interchange with Interstate 81 outside of St. John's. Down the road, 80 exits with Interstate 476, which can either take you to Scranton or Allentown. Continuing even further down the road, 80 spurs up to Dixon City with Interstate 380. Finally, 80 has a few exits in Stroudsburg before crossing the Delaware River into its final state, New Jersey. Starting in New Jersey, 80 turns south and parallels the Delaware River for a few miles before turning east again outside of East Portland. 80 has an exit in Hope, and with that we have officially left the Appalachian Mountains. I-80 has an exit with US Route 206 in Stanhope, and then another exit with the same route in Netcom. Around this area, 80 exits multiple times with US 46 before exiting from Mount Arlington. In Parsippany, Troy Hills, 80 exits with Interstate 287. Following that, Interstate 280 spurs off from Newark. 80 then exits with New Jersey State Route 23 in North Caldwell. It also exits with State Route 19 in Patterson, and then exits in Lottie with Route 17. Finally, Interstate 80 ends its nearly 3,000 mile journey in Teaneck, New Jersey at an interchange with Interstate 95, just a mere 5 miles from downtown New York City. Whew, that was a long one, likely the longest this season. Assuming I still have a voice, I'll see you next episode of Interstate 64. For real this time.